Hi everyone, welcome back to the Physics Masters channel. The topic that we will be looking at today is deformations. And deformations occurs when forces are applied to objects that are held rigidly and are thus unable to move. Dependent on the type and magnitude of the force being applied, the object will either be compressed or it will be extended. In this particular topic, however, we will place emphasis on the extension received by objects whenever a tensile force is applied to them. Whenever a tensile or a stretching force acts on a wire, a spring, or an elastic band, it causes it to receive an extension, which is denoted by the symbol X. This can be mathematically represented as X is equal to L2 minus L1 where X is the extension, L1 is the original length of the spring, and L2 is the final length of the spring. In performing calculations like this, one should also remember that force or weight is equal to mass times gravity. Moving on, we go into Hooke's law, which is a basic law in physics. And it states that whenever a tensile force is applied to an extendable material, the extension received is directly proportional to this applied force, provided that the elastic limit is not exceeded. Mathematically represented, Hooke's law is F is equal to Kx, where F is a force, K is a spring constant, and X is the extension. The spring constant K is a value that gives an indication of the stiffness of the spring or any other material that is being stretched. That is, the larger the value of the spring constant, the stiffer the spring. The SI unit for the spring constant K is Newton per meter. Now, in order to truly understand and master the topic of deformations, one has to familiarize themselves with force extension graphs, which are graphs plotted of force against extension. And in looking at this particular graph, one has to identify the elastic region, which is a region of direct proportionality. Once the load stretches the spring within the range of this region, it will return to its original length when this load is removed. But if it stretches past the elastic limit, the spring will never be the same. The elastic limit is a maximum extension that can be accommodated by a spring without it becoming permanently stretched. If the elastic limit of an object is surpassed, it will not return to its original length once the force has been removed. That is, the object will become permanently stretched. If the force being applied stretches the spring way beyond the elastic limit, after a while, the spring will reach its breaking point. And this is a maximum stretch or extension that a spring can endure without breaking. If the spring extends even an iota beyond this point, it will break. So in making a summarizing analogy of this particular graph, one can see that the region between O and A is the elastic region and the region between A and B is therefore the inelastic region. Let us take a look at some worked examples. Question 1 reads that a force F of 25 newtons was applied to an elastic band causing it to receive an extension X of 3 centimeters. Calculate the value of the spring constant K. Of course you know that we list the values taking the numbers out of the words. F is equal to 25 newtons, X is equal to 3 centimeters, and K is the unknown, for which we put a question mark beside. Next thing in line is to look at the units and see what needs to be converted. We realize that the extension X is in centimeters. We know that any length, distance, height, or depth cannot be represented in centimeters in order for us to put that into equations. So what we will do we will convert the 3 centimeters to meters. Dividing by 100, it gives us 0 0.03 meters. Next thing to do is to write the formula. F is equal to Kx. That's the Hooke's Law equation. 
But the fact that we are being asked to find K and not F, we will have to make K the subject. In which case, we'll have to move X. Moving X, it is multiplying on one side, so when it goes to the other side, it will be dividing. So in essence, the equation of K becomes K equals F over X. That is 25 newtons divided by 0.03 meters. In essence, the answer for K becomes 833.3 newtons per meter. Moving on to question 2. It reads that a spring of spring constant 310 newtons per meter is exerted upon by a force of 90 newtons. Calculate the extension received by the spring. Likewise, we list the values. Take the numbers out of the words. We are finding x, so we list it as well and put a question mark beside it. Next thing to do is to write the formula. f is equal to kx. We are finding x, so x must become the subject. Therefore means that x is equal to f over k. After which you substitute your values. 90 newtons divided by 310 newton per meter. Where the newton at the top will cancel the newton at the bottom. Leaving your answer to be 0.29 meter. That's the extension. Moving down to question 3, it says that a spring receives an extension of 8 centimeters when a mass of 35 grams was suspended from it. Taking the Earth's gravity to be 10 newtons per kilogram, calculate the spring constant of the spring. Likewise, we list all the values. Take the numbers out of the words. M is 35 grams. Converted, it becomes 0.035 kilograms. K is the unknown. That is what we want to find, so we put a question mark beside it. X is equal to 8 centimeters. Converted, it becomes 0.08 meters. And of course, you have to list gravity, which is 10 newtons per kilogram. The next thing to do is to write the formula for the Hooke's Law equation. F is equal to Kx. We are finding K, so it must become the subject. So K is equal to F over X. So what this is saying is that we need force and extension in order to solve for K. But we do not have the force. What can we do? Looking back at our listed values, we see that we have also been given the mass and the gravitational pull of the Earth. So we need to use these two values in order to find the force. Force is equal to mass times gravity, which becomes 0.035 kilograms times 10 newtons per kilogram, which gives us a value of 0.35 newtons. After we have calculated our force, we are going to use it to substitute it back into the equation for k, where k is now equal to 0.35 newtons divided by 0.08 meters. That ultimately works out to be 4.4 newtons per meter. Moving on to another question type. It reads that an elastic band of length 4 centimeters extended to 6 centimeters when a mass of 50 grams was suspended from it. Taking the gravitational pull of the earth to be 10 newtons per kilogram, calculate the spring constant of this elastic band. As usual, we have to list out our values. So L1 is equal to 4 centimeters, converted it becomes 0.04 meters. L2 is equal to 6 centimeters. Converted, it becomes 0.06 meters. And the mass is 50 grams. We have to convert this 50 grams to kilograms. So 50 grams is equal to 0.05 kilograms. Gravity is listed as 10 newtons per kilogram. And we are finding K, so we put a question mark beside it. And likewise, we need to write the formula for Hooke's law. F is equal to Kx. The fact that we're finding k, we need to make it the subject of the equation. For any value that we're finding must always become the subject. But in looking at the equation for k, we see that k is equal to f over x. And going back to our listed values, we do not have the force and we do not have the extension. So, in order to calculate the spring constant, we need both the force and the extension. But these two quantities are not given by the question, so we will first have to find them. 
So we use the formula force is equal to mass times gravity. Where the mass is 0 0.05 kilograms and gravity is 10. That ultimately gives us force is equal to 0 0.5 newtons. We also have to find the extension. We have been given L1 and we have also been given L2. So extension is equal to x equal L2 minus L1. And that ultimately works out to be 0 0.02 meters. Now that we have the force and we have also calculated the extension, we are going to substitute these two values back into the equation for k. k equals f over x. So k equals 0 0.5 newtons divided by 0 0.02 meters, which ultimately works out to be 25 newtons per meter. And with that being said, this finalizes our video on deformations and Hooke's law. I hope that it can help you with your studies. Because in order to truly understand this topic, one has to familiarize themselves with the different question types that may present themselves. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to click that notification bell. For there are several topics that we will be moving through in detail. Similar to what we did with this one. Have a nice day.